Hello and welcome back. And today we're going to do a very quick video on Samsung SSDs. More precisely, we're going to be looking at three of the most prominent Gen 4 SSDs from that brand. We're going to be looking at the oldest one, which is this, the Samsung 980 Pro. We're going to be looking at the newest one, which is the Samsung 990 Evo. And of course, although I haven't got one in the studio, we're going to be looking at the Samsung 990 Pro as we wait for it to materialize here on the screen. Are we good? There it is. Nice. Now, the reason we haven't got one here in the studio is I did have a sample unit for a review we did here on the channel a while ago. Indeed, all three of these SSDs I have reviewed within the last 12 to 18 months here on the channel. There was an upgraded version of the 980 and the 990 Pro arrived in the middle to second half of 2023. And of course, at the start of 2024 is the 990 Evo. All three of them, Gen 4 drives, all of them having very different um, ideas on performance, on durability, and indeed on terms of read and write performance and overall what they are going to do for you and their architecture. So hopefully by the end of this short video, you'll know which one best suits your needs. But if you need some help, if you want power efficiency and you don't want to spend a lot of money on the Alecky bill and you're running a real power efficient system, you want the 990 Evo. If you're running a PlayStation 5 and you want the best possible performance for your gaming, boom, the one there in the middle, the 990 Pro is by far the best performer and one I would recommend for a PlayStation 5. If you want a good all-rounder, if you want a very fast drive in terms of OS boot, in terms of database boot, in terms of PC gaming and best affordability and the best value for money option here on the table, boom. Boom, the 980 Pro is the one for you. But let's get into the specifics, shall we? So, performance numbers on all three of these tell very different stories and are very indicative of what their use case scenarios are. If you want to know the lowest performer of the three, the weirdest thing is the newest drive of the three is notably lower in terms of performance across the board, arriving with the lowest uh, sequential read and write performance both on the brand's own uh, reported maximums, but also our testing that we did um, at the beginning of 2024. And again, a lot of that is to do with this drive's architecture and lack of DRAM, more on that later on. Now, the middle ground of the three is indeed the oldest. The 980 Pro, rocking out there, arrived at the end of 2020, still manages to hit those 7,000 megabytes per second uh, re uh, read numbers and around five to five and a half thousand write numbers there. So again, if you're doing performance and actions, we're not creating data, you're mainly pulling existing data all the time. And again, that includes an operating system. That's gonna be a great drive for you. The same goes for gaming as well, with open world gaming and a lot of digital assets being required on the fly very quickly. I'm pleased to say that this drive had, was one of the earliest drives to have a one million 4K random IOPS rating. That means, 4K random IOPS means the very smallest amount of data pulled per second across the whole disk randomly there. So again, open world with procedural generation and texture shade swap out, it's a great drive for that. Now the middle drive there, the 990 Pro is the one with the highest read, highest write and highest recorded IOPS there. It uses the most modern uh, controller of the three there, the SSD controller, like the CPU and your computer. But moreover than that, it has the best and highest quality NAND on board. NAND is where your data lives. And this has the highest layer count NAND of the three, but it also has the highest quality NAND as well between the three. And although the NAND between these two is similar, it's still a distribution of the NAND, the layer count, the cell count, and the actual number of NAND modules just make it the better choice overall. And there's a reason why it's read performance there in excess of 7,300, 7,400 if you can tweak it just right. And write performance there in the 6,000s and IOPS numbers being the highest of all is why it is the best for sequential performance and block data, hence that PS5 uh, recommendation there at the beginning. Now, the reason for these drives having such differing performance numbers comes down to the hardware architecture and arguably why the price differs so wildly between the three of them. Now, talking about the price, the Evo there lacks something called DRAM. It is designed with no memory on board. It actually utilizes on-board memory of the machine it's using, the RAM, if you will. And if you're running a Windows or Mac system, that's great. You can install it inside there. And it will use that memory on board. Sadly, though, if you put it in some systems, again, like home consoles, like Linux servers, that don't have the provision or, in some cases, the ability to allow the SSD to use the memory on the PC, it lowers its performance in its overall sustained 
performance there. But that lack of DRAM also results in fewer components being utilized, which lowers the power consumption. It also requires fewer components, which drives the price down. And also the NAND memory, uh, sorry, the NAND flash, the storage we mentioned earlier on, there are fewer modules on this. Overall, that's why the price of this drive is lower, even though it's a Gen 4 times 4 drive. Technically a Gen 5 as well, but we'll talk about that later on. Now, straight back to the other end of the table, the Samsung 980 Pro. Although the price between these two here does fluctuate from time to time, generally on balance, you will find the 990 Pro the lower price point per terabyte once you look at all the stores. And the reason is... It's the oldest drive. It's been in distribution and availability for longer than anywhere else. And the result is that this drive has much more flexible pricing. Additionally, because it doesn't use the latest NAND uh, modules, although it may have had some upgrades since it originally rocked on the thing with its 119 layer NAND, the result is that the components there are a little bit more affordable. And thanks to mass production technique and its availability out there, it hasn't been affected by some of the uh, NAND shortages that have occurred in the last 18 to 24 months and distribution problems as well. Ultimately, this is the drive you go to if you're looking for the best value for money and if you're looking around for special offers. You will always find this drive on special offer, which brings us to the price point of that 990 Pro. Why, in some places, do you actually find it cheaper than the 980 Pro. Well, a lot of that is to do with one, the SKU number getting mixed up at retailers sometimes, but moreover, so Samsung want to phase that drive out. They want to phase that one out in favor of this, and at the moment, it's kind of a two horse race with the 980 and the 990 Pro. And I think a lot of analysts would have assumed that would have gone by now, but its popularity and the adoption of PS5 players as well has resulted in it sticking around a while longer. And more time this is spent in the market, the more it's benefited from that distribution pricing and availability uh, improving. So again, Value for money, most expensive, most cost effective, but again, cost effective does result in price dips as well between all three of them. Now, I'm going to wrap this video up real quick on the subject of future proofing because a lot of you are going to buy one of these drives, you're going to invest in your hard earned Wonga, wanting to know if you're going to get that money back years down the line or if you've blown your world right now and later on wish you'd held out a bit longer and got something a little bit better. And I'll tell you right now, technically, the 990 Evo is the most future-proof. It is Gen 5 times 2 or Gen 4 times 4. Now, uh, PCIe generations, and that is uh, the architecture with which M2 NVMEs like this run on, are actually backwards compatible. So if you use a Gen 5 SSD and you took that Gen 5 SSD and put it in a Gen 4 slot, it would auto-negotiate down. There's nothing special about a Gen 5 drive that can run on a Gen 4 slot. Where it's special is when you use that drive in a Gen 5 environment on that times two speed. This drive is designed for more curated and tactically built systems like mini computers, which are slim, streamlined down with smaller processors and kind of a lower hardware architecture, traditionally known as PCIe lanes afforded around the whole system. The result is, if you're running a mini PC, if you're running uh, a slimlined laptop, if you're running a very slim lap uh, MacBook you're upgrading, ultimately you are running a more streamlined and minimalist system, this will be a great choice. The problem is, not a lot of users use those machines and upgrade them conventionally. And I think a lot of users watching this are looking to upgrade a bigger rig, a beefier laptop, an ASUS Tough, an Alienware laptop. Very few of them are upgrading a thin LG laptop or something. And the result is that this drive not only is you know great to be more power efficient and more affordable, but unfortunately, even in terms of future proofing, I think it is up for debate whether PCIe Gen 5 times 2 will take off in the conventional IT market. It will definitely be taken up in mini PCs and laptops, but even then, it will be in the background. And most of those systems will arrive with what's known as an OEM drive. Ultimately, it will mean a drive that is supplied at the manufacturing level without, by default, with no choice involved in it. Whereas these two drives here are built with prosumer utilization in mind. And given the price point similarities between these, 
even though this is a Gen 5 drive, I still wouldn't recommend it in terms of future proofing, even in a Gen 5 system. Because in a Gen 5 system, this is still going to be on Gen 5 times 2 speed. And, sorry to be all boring and technical about it, once you put it in there, it's still only got that five to 6,000 megs max performance number anyway. Whereas these two increase on that performance number. And if you put these in a Gen 5 times 4 slot, which is more likely to be found, these Gen 4 times 4 drives will, you know, still run at 4 times 4 speed. That bandwidth of 8,000 megs. I know this is getting technical, but what I mean, basically, what you need to know is these two drives in a like-for-like -like installation will do better than that drive. There are a very slim number of instances where this drive will perform better, and that is systems that specifically have a Gen 5 times 2 slot in mind, or systems that need power efficiency and uh, performance efficiency you know, at their forefront, and also, also of course, the ability to utilize the host system's memory. But in every other regard, when it comes to future-proofing, this drive is probably my second best choice, and the 990 Pro is just the most future-proof of all the drives there on the table. And there you go. Those are the main differences between the 990 Evo, the 990 Pro, and the 980 Pro. Three drives that perform and provide very different levels of performance and ability depending on your needs. We could talk about durability. They have nearly identical drive rights per day or uh, terabytes written, aka uh, DWPD or TBW settings. And yes, the power consumption is lower on this drive, but there's no avoiding that the performance is better on these two. I hope this video has helped you. We're going to do a written guide link below that will go into these specifications and link towards all of the reviews and guides we've done this far uh, so far below. I recommend you check those out and do recommend I, I do recommend checking out the other reviews we do on the channel here for both gen 4 and gen 5 drives because there's some absolute stonkers out there for you so don't just lock yourself in with these samsung drives there are better options out there but apart from that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time